Hi everyone, my name is Jessica McGaw. I'm an alcohol ink artist and I'm here to show you a few of my favorite alcohol ink techniques so that you can try them yourself at home. So let's get started. Technique number one, palette knife. So for this technique, we're gonna use a rigid palette brush and we're gonna push the ink around the page. Um, I'm going to use some colors that blend well together and then I'm going to also choose a color that pops a little bit. So the first colors that I'm gonna use are the yellow and the pink. I'm gonna start with my yellow on the page and I'm just gonna forcefully kind of push that along the page. And you wanna just spread all that ink out. You don't want any pools of ink. on to my pink color and this pink will blend a bit with the yellow to create a nice orange so you want to work quickly enough that you're spreading your ink so it doesn't pool and now I'm going to add our complementary color a bit of blue You want to avoid adding too much blue so that things don't get muddy as you work. And I think that looks great, so that's the palette knife technique. Technique number two, creating fades. So for this technique, we're going to work on creating some fades in a couple different ways. Uh, the first technique, we're going to dot some of our ink onto our Yupo paper. And we're going to give that a second to dry up a bit. And then we're gonna add our isopropyl into the center and lift the page at the same time and sort of guide the ink. Down. And then you'll use a cotton pad or paper towel or a rag to soak up some of that excess. And then I'm gonna also use a hand blower. Spread this out just slightly. So really what you're doing is you're using the 99% isopropyl to help dilute that ink spot and guide the ink so that it slowly fades out. And I'm going to use my hand blower again just to dry this slightly and anywhere the ink's pooling you can soak up as well. So you'll start to slowly get this interesting faded technique. And now we've got a bit here and we're gonna fade it out this way. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more ink to the page. Give it a second to dry. And then add my alcohol into the center again. And I'm gonna angle the page in a different way this time. Kind of guide that alcohol. So these types of fades can be used to do, these types of fades can be used to create flowers or you can use them on their own as just an abstract element in your art pieces. It's got a really nice gradual gradient to it and a bit of a wispy effect. So the second fade technique that we're going to try today is the, a very similar technique where we're going to put the ink onto the page and we're going to add our isopropyl into the center. And then we're going to actually just use our hand blower. We're not going to move our page around. We're going to use this blower to sort of fade that ink and guide it. And the blower will start to dry the ink. So you'll start to get a bit of a wispiness as you dry. Now that this part is drying, we're actually going to add a little bit more of our alcohol into the center again and we're going to pull it out to follow and continue to use the hand blower and you'll just put isopropyl alcohol wherever you want that fade to follow and you can continue to sort of fade out those edges as much or as little as you like
All right, and that is the second fade technique. Technique number three, creating rings with a blow dryer. For this technique, we're going to use a blow dryer to create some rings with alcohol ink. So I'm going to start with a tiny dot of isopropyl and I'm going to add some blue ink right into the center of that dot. That's just gonna help our ink spread a little bit more. And now we're gonna add a decent amount of isopropyl and we're gonna swirl our page just the slightest bit to help these inks and the alcohol get mixed together. I'm actually gonna add just a tiny bit more alcohol. So now that we've got a circle here, we're going to use the blow dryer to dry this and you wanna aim your blow dryer toward the edge as you're drying. So I'm just working in circular motions here and as the ink, as the blow dryer dries our ink, um, it starts to create this very subtle ringed effect. So I'll do another one just to show that technique again. I'm just dotting some alcohol down and maybe we'll go with the pink this time. A few dots of the ink and add some isopropyl to that. I'm just actually gonna add a little bit more pink here. And then we're gonna swirl this around to sort of mix them. This shape's a bit irregular, but that's all right. Now we're going to, again, aim the blow dryer at the outside and slowly bring it in as it dries. So the heat and the air from the blow dryer will dry your ink quickly. And that's how you get the line effect. You don't want to place the blow dryer directly on the ink. You just want to kind of keep it off to the side. And then the other thing that you can do once this is dried down is you can reactivate another portion of it and use your blow dryer. So as you can see here, the heat from the blow dryer has created this really interesting effect. So we've got these rings and you start to get these really intricate details in the lines as you use your blow dryer to dry the alcohol and the ink. Technique number four, ink drips. So for this technique, we're gonna create a bit of a drippy ink effect. I'm going to add some ink right onto a sponge brush and add a little bit of isopropyl on there as well, just to help the ink flow a bit better. I'm gonna brush this onto my paper. And then I'm gonna choose a second color. Make a little bit with green. And I'm just gonna do the same same technique, add some nice purple to help the ink flow. I'll brush that on as well. I'm gonna mix the green and the blue just a little bit. And now we're gonna start the dripping technique. So we're going to add a little bit of ink up at the top. some isopropyl to that to help it flow down the page. And this is what's going to give you your drip effect, so let that flow down as much as possible. And you can, you can keep adding the isopropyl to help the inks flow more. 
Any areas that are really heavy with ink, you can add more drops. So you'll start to notice that the ink will start pooling at the bottom of your page. And at that point, you can use a cotton pad or a paper towel, to sort of catch some of that extra ink. Stripping. And then I'm actually just going to flip it and I'm gonna let it flow down the opposite way. And as it starts to dry, you'll get this really interesting sort of dripping ink effect. So by mixing our inks and our isopropyl and letting them slide down the page, we've created this interesting ink drip effect. Technique number five, adding details with alcohol. So for this effect, I'm gonna show you how to add details into your inks with alcohol. I'm gonna start by creating an ink wash on my page and I'll go with green. Add a tiny bit of alcohol to that to help the ink flow. We're just going to wash this over the page. And I might just add a tiny bit of blue just for a bit more interest here. Once your inks have dried on the page, I'm going to use a needle dropper bottle just for more control. And this has 99% isopropyl alcohol in it. And we're just going to drop the ink into our piece to create textures. So you can do dots along your page, all side by side. You can do lines to create different textures. You can sort of stipple it on your page to create a bit of an irregular texture. Or we can add ink and tilt our page, sort of guide the ink downward and create drips. Those are just a few different techniques that you can use to create texture in your ink using isopropyl alcohol. Technique number six, sponge gradient wash. For this technique, we're going to use a sponge brush to create a gradient wash over our Yupo paper. I'm gonna start by choosing some different colors and loading them onto my brush. I'm gonna go with pink. You wanna saturate your sponge. Do some yellow. A bit of green. Blue. and purple, and you can use as many or as little colors as you want for this. I just want to do a rainbow effect, and I'm going to add a tiny bit of isopropyl to this sponge brush just to help the inks flow. All right, and once that's done, we're going to just drag it along our page. create a very fun gradient effect. I'm just gonna overlap this one more time. You can move your brush in any shape or any pattern that you want to create this fun gradient effect. Technique number seven, saran wrap mosaic. So for this technique, we're going to choose some bright colors and I'm just going to dot them straight onto our Yupo paper and brush them through with a sponge brush. And I'm just going to load my brush with a tiny, tiny bit of isopropyl alcohol. And you don't want 
too much ink on your page for this because when we apply the saran wrap, it will take a little while to dry. Now I'm gonna add my pink here and sort of blend these two together. So I'm just washing my brush out a bit with some isopropyl. I'm gonna squeeze out the excess and then use a cotton pad to dry some of the brush. And then I'm going to add my pink to the rest here. And I just washed my brush so that when we do this pink part, it doesn't continue to turn orange. So now that we've got a nice wash and our piece is still a bit wet, we're going to take some saran wrap and we're going to gently place it over. And the saran wrap will start to cling. No, it's not dry, wet enough. That's okay, if that happens, what you can do is you can just rework your page with a bit more alcohol and a bit more ink. And I'm actually just gonna use a cotton pad for this to spread it around. So just putting the ink right onto the cotton pad to create this wash. Right, so you do have to work a little bit quickly with this and while it's still wet and tacky, that's when you want to get your saran wrap down. And as you apply the saran wrap, it will start to cling and create a mosaic effect. And you can just press down specific areas where you want it to cling more and lift any areas that you don't want it to cling to. And that is the saran wrap gradient technique. So this is obviously not the finished product. Um, after this is completely dried, we're gonna peel this up. You can check it every so often to see if it's dried. If the inks are moving at all, you don't wanna take your saran wrap off. I generally leave mine overnight just to be safe. And then the next day I'll pull off the saran wrap and I'll be left with a great mosaic effect. So I did one of these the other day and I'll just show you what a finished one can look like. So in the areas where the saran wrap was in contact with our Yupo, you can see a line, and then the areas where the saran wrap is raised, it leaves a different sort of shape there. So it ends up being a really nice mosaic. So I just wanted to show the finished mosaic effect from the pieces that Hannah and I worked on the other day. And when you peel this saran wrap off, you're left with a beautiful mosaic effect. And that one looks great as well. So yeah, this is just another example of a type of technique that you can use for larger art pieces or you can cut them up and use them for collages. All right, so that's all the techniques I have for you today. I hope you learned something new and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.